uh, hi everyone welcome to uh, my youtube channel so today we are going to discuss uh, dynamic delta hazing so uh, let's first start with this particular formula that you are seeing over here so this is the price of a european call option uh, so and you know this is the black source formula right so s into nd1 minus k to the power minus k into e to the power minus rt into nd2 uh, nd1 over here is also the delta of the uh, call option european call option okay so now what is uh, delta by the way so i think this is pretty much obvious i think you already know but let me just uh, put a bit of revision over here so delta is one of the greeks that measures how sensitive a particular option is or how sensitive the options price is to the change of the underlying asset so if your underlying asset moves by a bit how much your options price will move right that's basically your delta so delta is dv by ds as you already know where s is the underlying price uh, now uh, what is delta hazing uh, this is particularly very much important so delta hazing is the process of uh, neutralizing exposure to a small price movement in the underlying so you want that even if your underlying is moving obviously this will affect the price of your option right that you have undertaken position in but you don't want that to happen if you don't want that to happen you will basically haze your delta so now what is your delta has you basically want that your delta overall delta uh, of your positions is zero so that uh, you are not worry about, uh, worried about the changes that is happening in the underlying right so when your delta is zero so the portfolio becomes delta neutral or you say that you have a delta has portfolio meaning a small changes in the underlying asset price will not affect your total portfolio value so now for example you are long let us say one call option okay so you have long on one call option which is having a delta of 0.6 so now what does it mean that if your underlying spot moves by uh, let us say one unit then your a spot price then your option price will change by 0.6 unit so now what you can do is that uh, you can sort 0.6 share of uh, your underlying so now what will happen is that if your underlying is moving by 0.6 uh, one unit let us say your call option will obviously change by one unit uh, 0.6 unit in total but you are also sort 0.6 number of shares right so that would move your delta that would move your position by 0.6 unit downward and the call position was 0.6 unit upward so the total position is neutral right so basically the hedge reduce the your directional risk okay so today what we are going to do is that we will be seeing how we can hedge our uh, position dynamically like over a period of time. so basically your delta will be changing continuously depending upon what your stock price is right because and delta is nd1 and you see over here that d1 s involves uh, d1 involves your s the current uh, stock price so basically as in when your stock price change your delta will also change so you need to adjust the position that you are taken uh, the number of positions in your shares accordingly so we'll be seeing how we can adjust this position the total cost that will affect uh, the total cost that will that we will be incurring so now let me first introduce you to the scenario that the john c hall is taken this particular example is taken from john c hall uh, the table number 19.2 uh, and i'm trying to replicate that exact uh, exact table and this is pretty much good exercise and pretty much useful as well for all type of quants so let's do it so the example that they have taken is that they are sol selling uh, one lakh of options okay so one option is having one contract so the number of call options that they have sold is one lakh they are assuming that the volatility is constant throughout uh, the procedure uh, you can uh, change obviously uh, have a volatility model and then you can see uh, what would be the possible cost for hedging but we are now for assuming delta volatility to be constant interest rate is assumed to be 5 percent and the strike price of the call option, uh, call option that we have sold is 50 okay now we have around 20 weeks so we have 20 weeks remaining in the first week we have a stock price is 49 uh, on set of the second week we have stock price 48.12 and so on now what we have to do is that we have to find out uh, how at each instant to be re to re for us to remain delta neutral how many shares do we have to buy or how many shares do we have to sell okay so let's do it so this is uh, the first week uh, so 20 weeks is remaining so let's uh, divide it by 52 and convert the time duration into year okay so this is the uh, this is around 0 0.28 year and now let us Is there an issue? Yeah, I think there is some issue. 
it should be 20 plus 52 now it should be 5 so this is the number of weeks uh, we have we are remaining okay uh, when the uh, basically expiry from the expiries of this particular call option that we have so so we have around 20 weeks remaining the stock price is 49 as of now so what is d1 uh, d1 is this particular formula right ln of s by k plus r plus sigma square by 2 into t divided by sigma root t so let us uh, evaluate this particular term okay so this particular term would be uh, first of all a bracket and then ln which is logarithmic then s by k your stock price is 49 divided by k we have to lock it because we don't want it to change in the uh, other cells right so it would be uh, ln of s by k and then we have a plus sign and then the formula is r plus sigma square by 2 so we will be putting interest rate again we have to lock the uh, interest rate because this would be same in all the cells right so r plus 0 0.5 into uh, volatility into volatility so volatility is square sigma square right again we have to lock it let's lock it uh, then there would be multiplication only of the same term so let us just copy and paste it okay and then we have to this whole term should be multiplied by the time remaining which is t okay so we have completed ln s by k plus r plus sigma square by 2 into t and now we can close this term, uh, this numerator. Now we are left with this denominator, denominator which is sigma root t. Okay. So sigma is nothing but uh, this volatility. So we have already copied it, right? And then uh, square root of t, time remaining. So time remaining is this one. Okay. So this forms a d1. And now we, this will just uh, populate it downward. Uh, we don't have to calculate d1 for this one because this is the last week. We have zero time remaining. So let, let it be like this. Now delta. Delta is nothing but normal distribution, cumulative normal distribution. Okay. So what would be the delta in each week? It would be norm dot dist. So this gives you the, uh, if you put uh, x, which is the uh, d1, then the mean zero and the variance of one, and then the cumulative, uh, do you want to do the cumulative? Yes, I want to do. So I will just keep it true. And then this will give me delta. Okay. So now see, in the first week, uh, that is a 20, when the 20 week is remaining, the delta of the uh, option, right, is uh, delta 1 option is basically 0 0.52. But what we have done is that we have solved this particular option. Right. We have solved this particular option. So what we have to do is that uh, to remain for us to remain delta neutral, what we can do is that we can buy this my this into uh, this many number of shares because uh, this is the number of call options that we have bought. So this many number of shares underlying shares we have to buy because the, this is the delta. So for us to remain delta neutral, we have to buy delta into the number of call options that we have taken. So, right. So this is the number of shares that we will be buying. Uh, so if you see this value, this is uh, uh, in number. So what we can do is that we can just round it off. Okay. So I will be just rounding it off. So this is the number of shares that we will have to buy at each uh, number of shares that we should have. Uh, let me see if there is an issue. Yeah, there should be one issue because the number of shares uh, C2 should be logged. Okay. Right. Let me close it down. Yeah. So now if you drag it. Right. So this is the number of shares that we should have as it is state to remain delta neutral. Okay. Uh, so this is the first week. So uh, we don't have any share. So we will be uh, having this particular thing. So this is the number of shares that we should have in the first week or number of shares that we should buy in the first week. Now in the second week, we should have only 45,800 shares to remain delta neutral. But we already have 52,200 shares. So what we can do is uh, we can sell some shares, right? So this minus this. 
so we can sell 64 and dead shares and we will be dream we will be delta neutral again so i will be just dragging it down so in this week we have to have 52200 number of shares to remain delta neutral then we only need to have 45800 uh, shares to remain delta neutral so what we will be doing is we will be selling 6400 number of shares so you see we are hedging our position uh, so this is a dynamic delta hedging why because you are constantly rebalancing your number of position right so in the second of week for example you have sold 6400 number of shares to remain delta neutral so this is what we call dynamic delta hedging and this is quite a popular industry research because how many times do you uh, hedge your portfolio because it involves transaction cost as well right so this is quite a, you, you will find a lot of research paper on this particular stuff like what is the optimum frequency for you to hedge your portfolio if you want to remain delta neutral okay so you can read research papers uh, i will be attaching some references in future uh, so and you uh, and anyway you can contact me for this particular purpose so now you see at this moment uh, you have bought around 52200 shares so it will remain uh, it will incur some cost right so this is the number of shares that you have bought and uh, this share price is 49 so this will be the cost right so i will be just uh, uh, dragging it and so i will be writing it over here so this is your cost but i will be dividing it by uh, 1000 uh, because even john c has done it so that we will be talking the units of 1000 okay so that the sales remain uh, a bit clear so i will just dragging it down so the cost is in thousands okay so please keep it in mind or maybe i should explain it over here the cost of share is in thousands okay so yeah okay so the cumulative cost including interest uh, so let me explain it in the first week this is the one Now interest. So uh, this is the this is the price that you have paid, right? So you might have borrowed it from some. So you have to pay uh, the interest for this particular purpose. So you, because we will be taking the interest as well into account. Okay. So the interest that you will be pay, paying on this capital is two five five seven uh, into uh, in one week. How many? How much interest will you be paying? So let us uh, look into that. The interest rate is five percent per annum. So let let me lock it uh, first of all. This is the interest rate that you have to pay because you will be borrowing this to buy the shares, right? Because uh, taking everything, taking interest rate in account gives you the complete picture. And then divided by 52. So this will be the interest cost. So now the total cost. So you see over here, this in the first week you have to uh, spend around this much. But in the second week what happens is that uh, this is the first cost, cost in the first week. Then you basically uh, gain this much of amount so you have to add this amount as well because you gain it and then this is the interest rate cost in the first week okay so the total cumulative cost in the second week has decreased why because you have got some amount by selling the shares so now you can safely uh, drag it downward uh, just a minute drag it downwards so see the final cost for you to has your portfolio is 5263.30 into 1000 okay so let us see uh, one thing and the uh, final use is finally uh, you reach a delta of around 1 okay 0 0.999 so finally your portfolio is reaching a delta of 1 so your option expires in uh, in the money now since your option expires in the money you will have to since you have sold this particular call option the guy who has bought the call option from you he or she will be demanding the underlying shares right so how many call option did you sell you sold around you sold around 1 lakh call option and now finally if you see you have 1 lakh of uh, stocks right and zero number zero uh, so you have one lakh of a stock and uh, one lakh of options you have sold so but since you are delta neutral so now the thing is that what you will be doing is you don't have to buy any additional number of share you will be selling this particular one lakh share of to him okay and uh, why do we have to sell because this is the transaction between you and uh, that particular person because you have uh, <coughs> 
sold around 1 lakh option so he or she will be exercising this option and you have to deliver the underlying stock but you already have the stock because at the end of uh, at the end you have 1 lakh stock so you can pass this this 1 lakh cost to that part this 1 lakh stock to that particular person so now in the finally what you will be having is what is the final cost that you are anchoring is 5 to 6 3 into something into 1000 will be the final cost minus uh, 50 is the strike price and you are selling around uh, how many of uh, shares this number of shares right or you, you multiplied by this number they both make sense so this is the total hedging costs that you anchor to remain delta neutral Uh, let me just work this text okay this is the total hedging cost that you uh, have to have to remain delta neutral now comes the interest interesting part okay let me explain what is the interesting thing you will be saying this is this is net i have to incur the cost now so why will be engaging in this see you have initially sold one lakh call option so there comes the main part so at how many how much price did you sell this particular call option so there must be some price if that price is greater than this price right the total hedging cost right then you will be in profit otherwise you will be in loss so what is the purpose of continuous delta hedging so that you remain delta neutral so at the end you see you don't need to buy any additional stock you already have one lakh number of a stock that you will simply passing on to that person so in this particular lecture what i did is that i showed you i have shown how to uh, you know how to do the dynamic hedging basically how to hedge your delta continuously which is a dynamic delta hedging because the number as the stock price changes the delta changes and so you need to rebalance your portfolio continuously so you see in the first week uh, we had we should we had around 52 lakh 2000 shares then we had 45,000 8 lakh 800 shares then 40,000 shares so if you plot it let us plot it this is the number of shares that we uh, have continuously okay By the way, I recommend uh, you uh, if you want to do it in Python, that will be very much good because even I am comfortable in Python. Uh, so anyway, uh, I think format. Okay, so I'm not able to find it uh, because uh, even I'm not. Uh, let us see if there is insert chart. Okay, we have one thing. Yes, so this is the number of shares uh, you see uh, that we have uh, owned at a certain point. So initially we started with this number of shares, then it decreased, then it started increasing. So we continuously bought share, then we sold some. So this is how rebalancing happens, right? Uh, if you see this plot. So this is how delta hedging happens okay so such chart so this is the shares bought and shares sold okay So this is the number of shares that you own uh, uh, at each point of time and this is the number of shares bought and number of shares sold. So you are engaging with the, so why are you doing it? Because you want to remain delta neutral at each point of time. Okay. So that is it. Uh, you can try example number 19.3 of John C. Hull. If you have any question, feel free to ask it in the comment section. Thank you.